forse ce l'abbiamo fatta. Ok. Ok. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah? Ok. Uh, during the last lesson we, we developed an application that we can say a simple calculator. If you remember, um, I hope the computer will not crash. Okay. Sì. Così, prova. Prova. Eh, ok, attualmente me lo dite. Ok, uh, during the last lessons we create uh, the last lesson we created this uh, calculator. Ok. Uh, today we will uh, we will do some other exercises, so I will not dedicate uh, too much time to the calculator, but I want to uh, show you a little thing about the calculator. Uh, if you remember, we created, we created different methods for uh, each uh, button. So if we go in the main activity class, we can find the onClickAd method the on click mean method and so on. Uh, on the website I published uh, a improved and improved version of this calculator that uh, use uh, only one uh, uh, only one method for every button. Here you can see a lot of, uh, of errors because uh, I created the app with uh, Android, uh, Android Studio 2.1, instead I'm using uh, Android Studio 1.5 here, so the errors are not important. Uh, okay, here the, there is the same main activity that uh, we created during the last, uh, the last lesson, but uh, there is only one method that implements uh, every uh, operation that the calculator should do. So here we have the onClick function, and if we go on the uh, layout that is here, we can see that every button point at the same function, onClick function, onClick function, et cetera. Uh, but inside the, uh, inside the function, we will check what was the button that was pressed. So here we find the switch case in which uh, we look for the ID of each button and we uh, check what was it. So uh, the, if the, the user pressed the add button, we will perform an addition and so on, okay? Uh, you will find this code on the website. You can find now on the website the code. It is uh, here, near the Android Minimal Calculator. There is the link on GitHub, okay? Uh, Another, okay. I think it is uh, enough uh, for the calculator. Now I will uh, uh, introduce some uh, concepts that I uh, didn't uh, introduce during the last lesson, and then we will, we will do another exercise, more complex exercise, okay? Uh, okay, let's find the right slide. <laughs> Here is, okay. Uh, I told you that uh, an application, okay, an Android application is made by these four components, but uh, I spoke only about the activities, okay? Now I will speak uh, very briefly about the services uh, and uh, the, other, the other concepts. So let's go at slide. Excuse me for this slideshow. <laughs> okay, service. So, uh, uh, so I told you uh, a lot of things about the activity. Now uh, I will speak about the service that is a component that runs something in the background. So for example, to perform log long running operations Let's say, for example, we can, uh, if we want to uh, get data from 
a, an online service, we can use, we can, we have to implement a service that uh, fetch the data and then return them to the activity that wants to use it, if, for example. Uh, it, so the service does not provide a user interface and uh, it is only an information that can help you in developing. It is a subclass of an Android app service. Uh, every application component can use the service by starting it with an intent that I will introduce in the next few slides. This is the life cycle of a service and if you want you can uh, check every, every uh, every component of this life cycle, of this schema. Uh, moreover, uh, I will jump uh, the content provider because we will not use here, but uh, if you want more information, you can read the slide or uh, the documentation of Android. And moreover, there is the broadcast receiver that we will not use, but it is important to introduce because uh, it, uh, the broadcast receivers are, are used for uh, a lot of different services developing Android application. What is an Android, an, a broadcast receiver? It is a component which waits for messages from every service. So for example, when you receive a notification on your smartphone, a message is sent to every broadcast receivers that are uh, registered to the notification service, okay? And uh, it is not the only service that <laughs> produce messages for broadcast receiver. So every time uh, you will find something that use it, you can understand what, what are, what is. Uh, every, uh, as the services, the broadcast receivers don't display a user interface uh, uh, and the broadcast receivers are intended to do a very minimal amount of work. So if you want, you can uh, use services to do a lot of uh, uh, huge work, but the broadcast receiver should do only minimal uh, uh, work, okay? So uh, other stuff, other important stuff are the, uh, the app life cycle. It's important to understand what is and uh, uh, what are the main components of the app life cycle because uh, otherwise, uh, uh, okay, because they are important, okay? Uh, so as I told you, a Linux process in Android uh, is created for uh, an application when uh, some of its code needs to be run, and in, a, in an ideal case, all Android processes started by the user remain in memory. However, we know that uh, Android uh, smartphones have not a lot of uh, memory, so uh, the Android system is able to terminate running processes. And so here we can see uh, every process status uh, that uh, each app uh, uh, in which the app can, can be at, at the moment. So uh, at the bottom we find the empty status in which the application is not running, okay? Then there is the background in which the process is uh, holding an activity that is not currently visible. So when, okay, <laughs> if you want more explanation, you can find it on the, the documentation. I, I will go really briefly because I want to show you the exercise, okay? And moreover, there are the other three process uh, status that are service, visible, and foreground. So the foreground is the app that you are using. Uh, the visible is the app that you are not using, but you are, so for example, when you uh, show, uh, when we want to see the apps that are uh, running, you press the, mm, the right button, if I'm not wrong, and you, you will see every app. In this case, it, they are visible, but they are not uh, foreground, for example, okay? Then there is the service that, uh, as I told you, is run in the background, <laughs> okay, and the background is empty, okay. You will find a lot of more, more information on the uh, Android documentation and on the slides if you want to. Uh, another important stuff are the intents. Uh, so, an intent is a messaging object that you can use to request an action from another app component. We will use it, for example, to, uh, to go from a view, an activity to another activity, okay? We will see it in the, in the exercises. So uh, the, uh, um, the intents will be used to start an activity, to start a service, or to deliver a broadcast. Uh, okay, so now I will start to do the exercises, the exercise, because it is only one. We will uh, 
try to reproduce the application about the to-do list that we implemented during all the laboratories. And uh, we will uh, obtain something like uh, uh, the application that is shown on the, on the screen. However, I think we will not have enough time to implement all the function, but uh, I will publish the complete uh, uh, solution on, the, on GitHub as usual, okay? So let's go on Android Studio. Okay, I will close the slides so that my computer will not crash. The calculator can be closed. Mm -hmm. The other two, okay. Uh, I've already created a new project because, uh, as you remember, if I cr try to <laughs> create a new project, I cannot uh, see the the button to go to go on. So I've <laughs> already created it, but uh, you can create uh, it uh, by the usual steps, uh, and you will find what uh, is shown on the screen. Okay. As usual, we have the main activity, the layout. Okay. Try to open the layout. Okay, if you downloaded the last uh, version of Android, uh, Android Studio, and when uh, here is selected the N version, and this error is, is uh, shown, is the only way to solve it is to select another version of Android. It's a really simple error that is, is caused by the different version of the SDK, the Android Studio, and so on, okay. So here we have the layout of the app, and uh, I think it was not a good idea to close the PowerPoint, but I should, mm, no, I have the PDF that is better, I think, mm, okay. We want to uh, produce something like this, the first screen shot, okay? So let's start from uh, deleting the, you can see it. I try, I want to, okay. So I want to delete the hello world string and I press on it and press on cancel. And then I want to introduce a list, so. Let's uh, select it from the left uh, menu, list view. You can find it and simply drag in it in the, in the view. And now we have a simple list in the, in the screen. Okay. Let's rename it. So here they, they call it list view, but we want to call it uh, uh, to do list view. Okay, save as usual. And now uh, let's go in the main activity to perform the operation that we want to do. So as uh, you can remember, I think we, uh, we implemented, uh, during the last laboratory, we implemented a server side, a server that uh, provide REST API. So if you go on the website, you will find uh, at the, uh, at the laboratories uh, list, you will find uh, the last uh, exercise in which we implemented uh, a full uh, REST uh, web server. And you can download it uh, uh, using the link that is uh, near, near the the title, okay, so the solution on GitHub. Downloading it, uh, you will have this, uh, uh, <laughs> this solution that we don't have to see now. We only have to run it because we want to uh, get the, uh, the data from the server. So during these exercises, uh, during this and so on, I will uh, get the list of the to-do tasks from the web server that we implemented during the last laboratory. So let's run the server by simply press run. Okay, we can see that it is run on the, this link. So clicking on it, we can, okay. It was a bad thing because Firefox was opened. Okay, excuse me. 
we can see the application we developed in which we can see the list of tasks uh, and uh, all the operations. Now, looking at the server implementation, uh, we can see that uh, to do list, no? Here we can see what are the paths that are useful. We want to get the list of uh, elements, so uh, we, let's find the uh, get task, get tasks. So we have to use this path. So let's go to Chrome and let's paste this link here. So here is the link, the list of uh, to do uh, the, the, the tasks that uh, we want to import in Android. Uh, as a first step, we will copy this list and insert it in a JSON file. So we will read from the JSON file, we will print it on, this, on the list view, and then we will introduce the HTTP service that will let us call the server and get the list, okay? So let's start from JSON. <laughs> Your faces are not so, <laughs> okay. I, I'm copying, then I go to Android, and I will create the JSON file. Where we should put it? Uh, as I told you, uh, Android use uh, the MVC pattern. Not so much, but it uses it, and so in the, Java folder, we will find the code. Instead, in the REST folder, we will find the, uh, all the things that are related to the view, okay? So here we will, uh, uh, okay, here we find all the files in which, uh, uh, for example, the strings are, uh, um, are uh, declared, and here I will create a file that, uh, uh, so as a resource, I will create a file of uh, the JSON list. So in res, let's create a new folder, new directory. Okay, not sure. Okay, so uh, instead of new directory, let's press on Android resource directory because it is a resource directory, and let's create the raw directory that will contain the raw data, in this case the JSON, the list in JSON format, okay? Okay, and then let's create the new file, new file, I will call it tasks.json, okay, and then I will paste the JSON structure that I downloaded from the from the server. Okay, save. Now let's go in the main activity to uh, use this, uh, this JSON to populate the list. Um, okay. Okay, let's, let's start. So here we load the view. So uh, her dot layout dot activity main is the view. Uh -huh. Okay, now, how to read from file? Uh, the, one of the ways that is available to read from file in, Andro in uh, Android is uh, uh, by using the input stream. So I will use it for, to uh, get data from the JSON file and then uh, I will use the data to populate the, the list view. So, Let's write the code. They are only a few uh, lines, so I will write it by hand. String builder uh, is the, the object that will, uh, will be used to, okay, this line is not useful, excuse me. <laughs> In fact, I, use, I said you that we use the input stream, but I was declaring the string builder. Okay, input stream. Input stream, input stream, okay, is dot get resources, okay, dot open row, okay, it doesn't import the input stream, okay, open 
row resource and then r dot row dot task. As I told you last during the last lesson, the r file. Excuse me for the delay. Okay, the r file is the uh, is the class that is generated automatically by Android uh, to uh, identify every asset that is inside the app. So every time you want to uh, um, to get the, for example, the the file that is in uh, uh, row, you can use the R file to get it in this way. So R is the main class. Then you want to uh, get the um, the, the file that is inside the row directory, that is a resource directory, so you will use r.row because in the r file will be uh, instantiated a new uh, row object that points to the directory, and then we will use dot .tasks because in the r file there is an object that points to the task.json file that is inside the row directory. So the r, r file is the uh, the, the class in which every object will be uh, addressed by Android. So every time you compile, it, it, it will create an object inside the R file. So here I'm uh, reading from the tasks.json file. We don't need the extension just because I told you that it is an object inside the R file. Then uh, I will declare an input stream reader Okay, input stream reader equal to new, as usual, I create a new instance on the input, input stream reader, okay, passing the input stream I already created, stream, okay, and then I will use a buffer reader, Okay, you will find this code simply by Googling <laughs> how to read from a file in Android, okay? I'm writing it only because it is uh, uh, simple, but uh, as usual, when you program, uh, you will uh, use code uh, get from the internet. No. Input. Right, okay. Now we'll cycle on the okay. okay. Let's take it from the internet. <laughs> so here I will declare a string that will contain all the data download um, get from the file. So for example task uh, list in JSON. Okay. So let's, uh, let's assign the buffer, buffer reader dot read line, so it will read each line until it is not nu null, or null in English, okay, text, okay, here it is useful, the text that I didn't declare it before, Text dot append. Okay. At the end of this uh, function, we will have the task list in JSON by taking the text dot to string. 
value. Okay, as you can see here, we have uh, an, an error, and if, if we go on the error, it will say that uh, unhandled exception. So we have to introduce a, a try catch function. So here we have, because if the, uh, the code generates an exception, it will crash. Instead, we have to catch the error by a try catch uh, block. So try and okay, catch. Okay, I will get every exception, even though it only needs the as it uh, an IO exception, I will get uh, every exception, and simply I will print uh, an error by e dot, excuse me, e dot uh, print stack trace. Okay, so the error was added. Okay, there is a, mm -hmm. okay. I forgot something. Mm -hmm. Okay, the parentheses here. Okay. Save. Okay, now at the end of this, uh, uh, of this code, we will have the list of the tasks, but in JSON. Now we have to convert this list in a Java object, and then we will use it to populate the list view. Okay, here is other code that uh, uh, I can simply copy because otherwise we will not end in the <laughs> available time. Um, Droid to the list. As usual, this code will be available on the internet. So if you want to convert a JSON, uh, a JSON string in a Java object, you, will, uh, you can find it by simply Googling uh, uh, from JSON to Java object, and you will find something like this code. So I only copied and pasted it because we have uh, short time, so a JSON object was declared. Okay, I forgot something. We will pass the task list in JSON to the JSON object, and then it will generate a task list object, so an object, an Java object uh, produced by the, uh, the JSON. Then let's import another class, okay. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. So looking at the, the structure, we, we will have a task element in which all the elements are contained. So let's, uh, uh, we will uh, pass the name of the element to the uh, get JSON array function. So in the task list, we will have a list of the elements that, uh, that are in the uh, that are contained in the in the JSON in the in what we imported. So uh, then, let's create a list of tasks for the adapter that you don't know what is, but I will explain it. So let's go on. Okay, this is not yet imported. Okay, so uh, in JSON, the JSON object needs the uh, needs to know what is the structure of the data that are, done, that are uh, imported. So we will define a, a class in which uh, we, mm, we declare what is the structure of the data that we are going to import. Let's do it in, excuse me, in uh, the data, in, in a dedicated folder that I will call model because as I told you, there is the model view controller pattern we are trying to implement. So let's create a new package. Um, 
where in Android main that I will call model. Okay, and in this model I will create the class that I will call task. Okay, in this class I have to declare what are the elements of the, the data. So looking at the tasks.json, every task is uh, made by a description, an ID, and a urgent field. So let's go in the task.java and let's create three different uh, uh, variables. The first one is a string and it is the description. Then an int variable that is the uh, task ID. And then another int variable, integer variable that is the urgent value. Okay, so let's cancel it. Then I need a getter and setter method. I will not explain it because you should know what what the, what they are. But simply they are methods that are used to get data from the structure and put data in the structure. Okay, let's very simple. Very simply, let's say. <laughs> Oops. But we can do it uh, simply uh, by using uh, an Android Studio function that is here, generate, that will let us create the getter and setter methods. So I press the right button on the mouse, I clicked on generate, and then I'm clicking on getter and setter that are here. Then I will select all the fields, all the variables, and then I will press OK. OK, as you can see, Automatic Android Studio automatically generated the three uh, the, the function that uh, are useful to get and put data. Okay. Save. Okay. This data will be used here in the uh, in the method that will get the data because the uh, JSON array is able to get data simply by uh, by the, the, the function that you can see. Uh, you have only to specify what are the, what is the structure of the data and then it will use it, okay? So here it will ask what is task. I already implemented it, an array list. So here I have an array list of task element. So in this way, Okay, I'm using the, the method set, set method to set the, uh, the value in the, in the task variable, let's say. So here it is not set ID, but it is set uh, task ID, if I'm not wrong, yes. Okay, let's analyze the code. Okay, at first we create a JSON object that is used to uh, parse a JSON element, a JSON uh, array. Then I will create a, a JSON array. So the JSON object is a, um, the object created from the list, from the, the direct from the JSON file. Then I will create a list of elements contained in the, in the file. So if we go here, we have the tasks element that contains all the other task element. Okay, and here I have I want to generate an array from that uh, tasks list, okay, so tasks is here, and okay. Then uh, I will uh, take the elements from the JSON array and I want to convert it in Java. So that, uh, in this way, I will uh, cycle on each element present in the JSON array, and I will uh, uh, generate a Java object of tasks element. So in this way, as you can see, we get the JSON object from the uh, single task, from the task list, and then I will, uh, I, we will uh, inject the, the data into the, the elements task. Okay, I think it's, uh, it's better to see the code because my explanation is not so, so an explanation, uh, but in this way we create the list. Okay, it's easy. Then we want to, uh, we want to see this list in the list view that is in Android. So let's start from, uh, for instantiate, okay. okay. 
So now we have a list of tasks, but each task is made as declared here. So it has a description, a task ID, and the urgent field. However, the list view needs a list of strings. So we have to put every, uh, every element in a, uh, in a list of strings. So uh, simply here we declare an array a list of string that I will call tasks. Oops, excuse me. Tasks. Okay, new array. String. Okay. And I will cycle over all the elements. I already used the tasks. Okay, let's call it uh, in another way. Okay, it, it was not really task list. Okay, it is not you. It is not necessary if we want. Okay, let's do it without this this kind of code. Uh, so let's call, let's create an instance of the list, list view, to do list view. No, I, I called it, okay, to do list view, wow. Okay, then import the class, okay, and let's take it list view. Find view. We, we already saw this instruction in the last uh, in the last lesson, if you remember. Her dot id dot to do list view. Okay. The her is related. Uh, find view by id is not. ID, excuse me, okay. Uh, then, it is difficult to explain, but we have to do it. Let's look at Android. Internet as usual it doesn't work. Okay, uh, we can say that uh, a list view uh, accepts a component that is called a ray adapter, in which uh, we have to say uh, to the to it that we, what what is the list, what is uh, the layout that we want to use for the list, and. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, and the, the, the activity that is generating the list. So I, I will show the code. Uh, the, uh, so this, this component is called the array adapter. So let's create an array adapter and then I will uh, say what are the uh, needed fields. Okay, adapter. Okay, new array adapter. Array okay. adapter. Mm -hmm. It's not right. So the first one is this. That is the context. Then Android dot R dot layout. Simple list item one. Okay, and tasks list tasks. Okay. So I created an adapter. What is it? Uh, as I told, it is as I told you, it is uh, a component that is needed for to the list view. So the uh, when you so, um, 
uh, if you want uh, to create uh, a list of elements, you cannot pass only the list of strings to the array list. You have to pass the array, array adapter in which you declare, first of all, what is the context that is uh, creating the, uh, the list. Then, what is the uh, layout that you want to see to, uh, to use for the list? So, for example, if you want to, see, to show a list of, uh, let's say, uh, I don't know, a list of house, which uh, another field uh, near the first uh, the, the title and another field near the other. So, let's say that the list is not, uh, L, uh, okay. If you want to show something like this here, so, the title, then the urgent field, then another button and another button, you can uh, declare it so you can, uh, you can show a list of items that are not simply strings. Uh, how, uh, you, you can do it by simply uh, declaring a new layout and then by creating an array, a custom array adapter. Now here we are using a, a default array adapter in which we can only pass a string and the default layout. I will use the default layout because it's simply a list of strings, okay? And then at the, at the end, we, can, we have to pass the list. However, as I told you, the list is made by task elements that are made by uh, three elements. Uh, what the array adapter will do is convert the element in a string. So, uh, as usual, Java create uh, a string that is really not uh, uh, good, let's say. Uh, but we can force to create a string that is uh, uh, better for us by simply declaring the uh, two string method. So, overriding this two string method here. So, let's create a public. Uh, Mm, void to, no, I think it's a string, to string method, but I'm not so sure, so let's see it. I will find it. the two string, okay, it was just uh, as I wrote. So uh, we want to return only the description because the other fields are not important for us. So we only want a list of descriptions and we don't have to forget the override directive, override, okay. In this way, we are overriding the two string method that is default implemented by Android. And in this way, by passing the task list to the adapter, it will show the description that we want, okay? Uh, so now we have to do the last thing, so to do list view dot set adapter, set adapter, and the name of the adapter, adapter, okay. In this way, we should see the list of uh, uh, of, uh, to, of tasks that we want to show. Let's try. I forgot to start it. The digital machine before the, this moment, but I hope it will be very fast. Um, the, 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 the app should uh, download the list, should take the list from the JSON file, then it, sh it should show it on the, on the screen in the list view. But uh, we are waiting for the emulator to start. In the, in the meantime, I think we can do other things, so for example, considering that we have to substitute the, uh, the JSON file with uh, the string uh, 
uh, taken from the from our web server, we can uh, move the first uh, the first part in a new function that will be simply substitute, substituted, okay, uh, from with the HTTP implementation, okay. Upgrading. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move the the first lines. So uh -huh -huh. these first lines. The emulator started. Let's look up. Okay, as you can see, here is the list of tasks that tasks contained in the in the JSON file. Okay, and as you can see, it is shown only the description. Just as uh, to be clear, if we delete the, oh my God, this is the right program. Uh, if we delete uh, the two string method from the task class here, it will print a very strange string that contains other information about the, uh, the variable. So, just a moment, okay. <laughs> As you can see, model.task uh, at uh, a number that is a, the ID of the variable. So, it converts the variable in a string, and it ob ob obviously does what is best, the best thing to do, I, I, what it thinks it is the best thing. So, uh, let's move the code uh, in the main activity to a function, so let's, cut, then create the public uh, string, because we want to return a string. Uh, I will call it uh, get task list, get tasks list, task list in JSON. I know it is really, okay. Then uh, it all obviously need the try catch block, that I can copy from the, from the top, okay, I forgot something, what, missing return, uh, it is right, so return task list in JSON, okay, but it was declared in the try block, okay. In this way, we can call that method here, so string, excuse me, task list in JSON equal to this dot get list in, oops, get list in JSON. Okay, so it should work as before. Okay, as you can see, the movement was not uh, dangerous. So, let's substitute this method with another method that gets the data from the web. How we can do it? We can use the HTTP URL class, connection class. Uh, as before, uh, uh, yes, there are only five lines of code, so let's comment this uh, uh, function and let's substitute it with another one which the implementation with implementation so instead of considering that the data taken from the, the server will be similar to the one that, will, that uh, were taken from the file, we will use again uh, an input stream to convert the data to a text, to a string. So I will uh, uh, leave the code here because we will use some of them, okay? Some of it, excuse me. Okay, so let's create an HTTP URL connection. Con, okay, URL, L O B J okay, new 
URL. Let's copy the code from here, excuse me, the link URL from here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, but we need the list, so the, code, the link is this one. Okay. Let's import the URL class. Okay, then let's create the connection con equal to HTTP URL connection. So we, we are casting it obj dot open connection. Then we want to uh, to use a get method. So con dot set request method get. Then, uh, okay, we can connect. Okay. Now, the, the stream will be in the variable con dot get input stream. Okay. Uh, we will pass this input stream to the, uh, to the input stream we already used before so the in the buffer input stream buffer input stream is here so we don't need this code okay okay what i forgot mm -hmm. I passed it to the wrong uh, function, simply. Okay, I have to pass it to the input stream function, okay. <clears throat> In this way, it should uh, work and uh, take the data from the, from the server. However, there are two things that we have to address. The first thing is that uh, Mm -hmm. It is here. Okay, in Android, uh, each instance of the emulator runs behind a virtual router or firewall. So we cannot use simply one, two, seven, and so on as a local address, but we have to use another address that I will write here, that is 10.0.2.2 to refer to the local address of the machine, because we are running a virtual machine we are running a virtual machine inside our, uh, our uh, operating system. This virtual machine will have, um, will, uh, will run a virtual router, as I told you. So if we want to use the local address of the uh, operating system, we have to use another, uh, this address, okay. You will find more information as usual on the documentation on Android, so okay. <laughs> Uh, you have only to say to, to know that uh, the, the emulator runs behind a virtual router uh, or service, okay? That isolates uh, it from our development machine. It is the reason why we use another uh, URL, okay? So if we try to uh, run the code, it will generate an exception. Let's see what is the exception. Here is the exception. Okay, it is a socket exception. Permission denied. What does it mean? Uh, okay, if we look on the internet, 
uh, when an application attempts to perform a, net, a network operation on its main thread, uh, the, an, an exception is generated. So we are trying to get data from the internet in the main activity. What should happen? What would happen? Uh, if the server is not reachable, for example, for 30 seconds, uh, and we are running it in the main, main activity, the application will not uh, uh, do anything until the data are get from the, from the server. So we cannot do it in the main activity. We have to do it in a service or an async task. It is called async task. So we will move this code inside another, uh, another class that will be called by the main activity. Okay. I will define this class in a new file that I will uh, take, for example, in a new uh, uh, package that I will call uh, async classes. Okay, and I will call it uh, async. How did I call it? Async get task list. Okay, uh, we have to extend, as I told you, a, an async task class, so extends async task class, to which we will pass different parameters. That I don't know if it is the case to explain you what, what they are. Maybe you can see it on the documentation, as usual. Alt, oh. Okay, so now we have to implement the method. Why don't you help me? Only not structure. Okay, <clears throat> now. Oh my God. If we go, I think it's better to see it. Android task. Task. Okay. If we go on the documentation, I think it's better to do it, to say it, because otherwise I will continue to say, go on the documentation and see it. Okay, uh, if, we, if we go on the documentation, we can see that the same task enables, uh, uh, okay, this class allows to perform background operations and publish results on the UE thread without having to manipulate threads on, or handlers. So we can uh, actually take the data from the server and then modify the, uh, the user interface, so the view. Okay, so we are using the sync task. Here we can see an implementation of the sync task that I will copy as it is, and then I will modify the code <coughs> inside my, my class. Okay. Let's start from the uh, okay doing background method. Okay, <clears throat> what I need here? Uh, I want to perform the actions that we did in main, main activity. So I have to take the these operations. Where is it? Okay. Okay, we want to get the data from the server and return them to the uh, main activity. So we have to copy this code, all the get task list in JSON function inside the do in background one. Copy and okay, paste. Okay, it suggests us to, to import the, the right classes. Then I will convert the, the method to a string one. So we want to return a string, uh, a string. 
Okay. So here we pass, if, if we want, we can pass some variables, but now we don't need it. Okay, we will leave for, for this moment without anything here, the other method, methods. Okay, what must it be abstract? Okay, it is right, we have to declare it. Um, just the indication. Uh, I forgot the override. Override. No. Mm -hmm. Must either be declared abstract or implement abstract method. So I'm forgetting something. What I'm forgetting. What I forgot. Protected public classes in task at sense. Maybe this, no? No. Oh. I have an error, but I don't understand. What is the error? Extends async. So I don't progress. It says that class async get task list must be declared abstract. I think it's not the good, a good idea or implement abstract method doing background parameters. But why? I don't know. Let's generate the constructor. It's not a real problem. There is the on process update method. Then execute it. Maybe copy. Execute. Was not solved. Excuse me. I don't really know what is the, the error. Let's try to copy the class I've already created a few hours ago, just as a, as a check that Android is working fine. Okay. Class. Okay. Here I don't have the error, so I'm forgetting something. Excuse me. Eh? <sighs> oh, it's. It's right. I forgot to change the the type of the variable that I will get because the async task needs the variables, the, the type of variables that will be used by the methods that are implemented. And I declare that I was I want to uh, to get a string instead. Here I I declare that I wanted a URL. So it, it was the error, even as though the Android Studio said everything but not the, the right reason. Okay, uh, so I implemented it, and now we have to go in the main activity and uh, use it. So as before, let's copy the code from the... Today I cannot find the right task list, no. Oh. Thank you very much. Okay. So, 
instead of using the task list in JSON, okay, we have to create an async, an instance of the async get task list class, okay, equal to new async get task list, okay, and for now anything else, <clears throat> and then task.execute will execute the, excuse me, I, I called it async get task, so get task, so the execute method will execute the, the code contained in it. Now, uh, what happens that as, as, as soon as we start the activity, it will execute the code that is declared in the async get task list class. Now we have to generate another method that will be called from the uh, async task, uh, async class, when the data arrived. So let's delete all the useless code and let's create a new method that I will call public. Um, I will call populate list background, for example, populate list background with something that we will see. Okay, so we need the uh, list, so task list in JSON. Okay, excuse me, I forgot the, I forgot the type, string. Okay, now unhandled exception as usual, so try I catch this here. Catch. Okay, and now we need to call this method from the uh, uh, from the from the async uh, class, the async task class. Okay, what happens? As you can see here, I, I copied the, um, the code from the from documentation, but you, uh, you can see that there are some other methods implemented. So on progress update on post execute and on pre execute. So this method will be uh, called the on pre execute before the execution and on post execute after the execution. So when we get the data, the on post execute method will be called. So here we have to get the data and send them to the uh, populate list background method that is in, inside the main activity. How we can do it? First of all, we need in the on post execute method, we need a string. So let's call it string. Let's, excuse me, let's uh, declare the type of the result as string. Uh, then, okay, here we declared that the result will be a string. If we see on the documentation, uh, uh, the declaration is, 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 is void, okay, mm -hmm. simply don't remember if it is the first one or the, the last one, because the one of them is the, uh, the this one, so the type of uh, data that will be used by the do in background, and the other one is the data that will be used in the on pre, excuse me, on post execute one, okay. Uh, the documentation is not helping me. Okay, params, progress, results. So the first one is referred to the param, the parameters that we will, uh, we will use in the doing background method. Instead, the last one is the result produced by the async task class. Okay, so in the on, pro, in, uh, on the, in the on post execute, we will need a string. Okay, now, okay, now, okay. 
return, okay, no. We have to get this data and send them to the populate, excuse me, or to the main activity. But at this moment, we don't have any reference to the active, main activity. So we need to pass this uh, content to the uh, constructor of the function. So here, I will uh, say that as soon as this class will be called, we need a context. So let's call it uh, context. That is referred to the main activity context and an activity. Activity. That is referred to the main activity context. Okay, then I will declare some variables, some global variables here. Let's call it M context. Excuse me. Context. M context. And activity. In this case, considering that we are using the main activity, let's use the main activity. Activity. Main activity. Okay, thank you very much. Then we have to import the class. Okay. And then in the constructor, we assign this value, this dot m context. Excuse me, I want to call it m, m activity. M context is equal to context just received. And this dot m activity will be the activity just received. Okay. What is the error? because I have to cast in main activity. Okay, now we have the needed context and activity and we will use it them in the on post execute. So let's use the uh, M, M activity, excuse me, M activity to call the populate list background method. So in this way we call the, the method that will uh, uh, load the list in the list view. So let's pass the task, the result. Okay. Oops. Perfect. Uh, we, we already need to pass the context and the activity to the class. Where is the error here? So we need to pass this, that is the um, the context and uh, okay, this dot base get bet, uh, get base context is better, and uh, this dot uh, this is the activity. So let's save, and if I didn't forget anything, it should load the list inside the list view. Let's try it. I think I forgot something, <laughs> as usual, because I have the same exception. Render the divisions request true. Okay, uh, so let's look at each class. Okay, on create, async, get task list, okay, dot execute, maybe here I have to pass something or not. No. Okay, so execute, that will call it. <coughs> Context activity, okay, doing background, get task list, okay, URL object, uh, today is not a good day to do exercises. Uh, 
URL, connection, open connection, get, connect. Let's declare some other field. I'm not sure as are useful, but considering that we don't have too much time to try a lot of other things, let's copy and paste everything we need it. Uh, set request method, okay, time out. Uh, okay, input stream. Okay, it's not useful. Save, let's try again. No, but because the exception is this one. Socket exception. Uh, okay. Oh, yes, I forgot. Ah, yeah. as, as I told you in the last uh, <laughs> lesson, as usual, when you don't understand what, what is the reason of your errors, it is related to permissions. I forgot to declare the permission related to the internet because I have to use the internet, so I have to declare the permission. So I, here I have to say that I want to use this permission and if I'm not wrong, internet permission. What? Something disappeared. Okay. Okay, maybe it sh now it's, it works, I hope it will work. In fact, it works. Okay, so the, the, the problem was related to the, to the permission. And uh, when I told you that the exception was related to the uh, the fact that I, want, I wanted to get data from the internet in a main activity, the exception that we saw was uh, related to the permission. Instead, the, the exception that should be, uh, should be generated was the network on main thread exception that we didn't see because uh, of the, uh, the permission uh, uh, string in the manifest was uh, was not declared. So uh, I wanted to show you a lot of other things. Uh, just uh, because I want to say you <laughs> a lot of things, I, I will show the complete version of the application that we will uh, you will find on the website website, and I will discuss it with you it in the few minutes that remain in the, the, in the lesson. So uh, let me take it, Android to-do list manager. So I did the same things that we did during this uh, uh, bad <laughs> uh, hands-on, uh, but uh, with something else. So if we see the project, we have a lot of uh, of classes, activities, and so on, because we, uh, I, I did everything we did in the uh, exercises in the laboratory. But uh, essentially, we have the same main activity that we have already cre created now. But for example, here we, we pass the, uh, the URL inside the execute uh, method. And if we go in the async get task list, uh, class, we can say, we can see that uh, this information is taken here in the doing background method. Moreover, I implemented an on resume method that, uh, if you remember, the life cycle of an activity, the on resume method is called when you are running another activity, but uh, you didn't uh, close this one and the activities are again uh, shown to the user. So for example, you open another application, so your application, your activity will remain in the background, then you call it again from the list of uh, uh, executed process, and the on resume method is the one that is called. So here I load again the list 
uh, from the, the web server as soon as the, the activity is, uh, um, is called again. Uh, then, uh, in addition to what we saw, uh, here I, um, I set a non-click listener, so uh, every time you click on uh, an item from the list, a new activity is called, and here you can see how to call the activity using the intent that I introduced during the a brief uh, introduction using the PowerPoint uh, slides. And here, so we are calling, we are executing another activity that is called task details activity, and we are passing uh, some parameters. So in this case, we are passing the task ID parameter using the bundle and the put int put extra methods. Then we start the activity. Here uh, I commented this code, finish. So if we want to close the activity so that when the, the user press the back uh, button, it will not show this activity, we have to use the finish, uh, the finish method. So when you go in another activity, if we don't call finish, when you click on back button, it will load again the, the old activity. Instead, if we, uh, if we use the finish function, it will not show the, the old one. So it click, okay. Uh, then, here is another, okay, then I, I did a lot of other things inside this, uh, this application. I will show what does it mean. Uh, okay. I think it's the old one. No, it is the it is the, the old one. Okay, so the the full application show you the shows you the the list of of tasks. If you click on a task, it will show you the details of the task letting you to update or delete every task. If we go back, it, it will come back to the, to the activity. Then if we want, we can click on the insert a new task button calling another activity. So you can see everything uh, you need to implement an application for your projects uh, by simply downloading this application. I know I, I wanted to show everything, but uh, uh, considering the errors, I. Uh, I had in the code and uh, everything, I was not able to do it. So, as usual, if you have questions, you can write me an email uh, or uh, you can come in the LabSay laboratory and uh, I, we, I can help you to implement everything you need, okay? Thank you, uh, we will see in the laboratory.